All right. Okay. So it's like, is it Saturday afternoon? It's almost 7 p.m. Uh, so we're going to do a little recap here, figure out where the different teams are at, and uh, figure out uh, how we're doing prototype wise, as well as getting an update from some of the other stuff systems. So um, I'm not sure where do we want to start. Uh, I think, I guess we kind of start with design. So who's been really working on design stuff? Braden, do you want to talk here first? Um, so what are some of the things that you've been like kind of prioritizing in like the, the design phase? You can just hold that. Yeah, sure thing. So I guess as of now, uh, we are currently planning on running a 27 by 27 uh, square swerve drive. Um, the plan is, as of now, is to do a linear uh, uh, intake with with a four inch uh, squish, 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 uh, squish wheels. And then our plan is, is that when the uh, linear intake extends out to the 12 inch maximum um, outside of the frame perimeter, there will, our hopper will extend to that 12 inches to then have us gain an extra 12 inches of linear area to uh, carry more balls. As with this year, you, we can carry a limited number of balls. And then when the balls do come into the robot, um, it will be then funneled into this V-shaped funnel. Um, there will be two belts at the bottom of it to help uh, intake the balls into the back end of the robot where the shooter is located. And then at the back end of the robot, as of now, there are going to be some belts or a kicker wheel to actually kick up and suck the wheel into our oh, like, ball tunnel. Right. And then it will go into a fixed hood as of now. With some simple calculations, we figured out that it will be a 22 degree hood angle. So we'll keep that stationary. And then we'll, we will have two uh, rollers. We'll have a four inch main drive wheel. <laughs> and then we'll have a uh, two inch uh, top roller wheel to uh, change some of our RPMs to either uh, change our uh, angle of attack based on the different types of hood. Okay, then, so like bounce outs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, based on the different positions that they will be in. Yeah, and then just based on the different configurations of RPMs for the either the four inch main drive wheel or for the two inch roller, um, to change the different positioning and the angle of attack. The top roller will most likely be spinning in the opposite direction of the main drive wheel, so that we get more of a control of uh, when the ball comes in, and also no backspin or forward spin so that it doesn't fly out of the hopper when it comes in. And then as of now, we are still in the prototyping stage of trying to figure out what we want our uh, climb to be and as of now we are trying to hit for a level one climb okay cool yeah sounds like you guys have some really good things going on here in the design phase um do we have the capability to pull up the video of the prototype here um can we do that kind of see what we're working on um yeah okay yeah we can do that um so yeah who's working on the field right now uh you guys are over here all right who wants to give an update as where we are with uh the field so right now we're working on making the main hopper that all the balls go into. I forgot the name of the element, but um, we're almost done with that. Okay. Are we planning to build any other fill, uh, fill elements? Um, that's what we're working on right now. It was talked about maybe doing a, the climbing one, if we get to climbing with the design. Oh, nope. Cool. All right. Um, who else do we want to hear updates from? Um, let's see here. I guess I can do a little bit of update. Um, well, no, well, programming. Who wants to update programming? Yeah, okay, here you go. Yeah, so, um, hold it to closer to the end. Yeah, we are sort of starting to get our project up and running. Um, we, we built a project and we're starting to outline some of our subsystems. Um, so as we hear from design. We're starting with like a shooter subsystem and an intake subsystem, a climber subsystem. Um, and then we're also trying to branch out and look into the 2026 game tools. Um, so we have we have a couple people working on downloading those and working with, um, we're going to switch to Griftylib. Um, so we're working on figuring some of that out. Um, and yeah. Cool. Yeah. So getting off the ground uh, with programming as well. Uh, David, do we want to hear from other groups too? Yeah, who else has who else who else has up? Hmm? Okay. No updates from the electrical side of things yet. We're just getting things going prototyping wise. And um, oh, uh, does anyone want to talk about there's that uh, that motor controller 
that uh, that works with the new uh, Turkey Bot Nova motor controllers. It's I don't remember the exact name of motor the, the motor tester. Yes, the motor tester. Um, has that been coming in useful for the prototypers? Who's working on? It helped us work on the intake and helped us test how we do the different shafts at the same time to right now it's still working on getting everything into the popper area and adding another set of wheels on a shaft to get it into the robot over the bumper but it's been helpful because it has good control and it means we don't have to use another drill yeah, that's incredibly useful because you guys aren't out there like messing around with other power sources. You're actually turning the motor with its own power as if it were a command robot. So yeah, that, I'm glad that's been that's been helpful for you guys. So. All right, who else has updates? Anybody? Anybody want to? Anybody want to share anything? Anything that they've learned so far? Anything? The swerve drive code was working and the frame is being reassembled to its new perimeter. Okay. Right, I'll go over here with Raven. There you go. So I guess at the uh, before the I guess the kickoff started, we initially had a practice chassis for us, and based on the previous years of the game, it's usually been roughly 120 uh, inches or for the perimeter. So for our previous chassis design, it was a 29 by 29 square. But since with the robot, new robot rules this year with the being 110 inches, our current chassis was oversized. So as of now, we are trying to change our different our swerve drive to be actually inside the rules of this year. Um, and then additionally, we're just trying to do some different packaging based on either a different width of the robot or different lengths of the robot. Cool. All right. Uh, in terms of packaging, we're planning to, are we planning to go underneath the bar? Uh, okay. Yeah, so as of now, we are planning to go underneath the, the bar or the 22-inch height limit. And then additionally, uh, we are trying to see, if, based on our bumper height, if we can make it over the, the trough or the, the beam, I don't remember what the name of it is, um, either based on either increasing our height above the ground of our bumpers or just changing the orientation of how we drive. That we do not bottom out. Oh, so that you like go sideways over it rather than going front ways over it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are there going to be concerns with getting it stuck on the on the? Uh, bump? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. How do we get it to go over without bottoming out on the bump? Yeah, because as of now, we were doing some a quick little bit of geometry. If you actually rotate the robot forty five degrees, because with us having a swerve drive, we have I guess four points of contact on a level ground. With us, if we were to rotate the robot 45 degrees, we could hypothetically have when the like when the two corners of the robot um, go on that edge of the, uh, I guess, the top of the trough or the top of the beam, I should say, um, it will not bottom out. And then more or less just tips like a, a seesaw back down okay. onto its three wheels. So you would go over it at the 45? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, to make sure that it does bottom out. And even if it is on a slight angle, it shouldn't, it shouldn't need to bottom. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, any other updates from anybody? Um, is there anything else more we want to hear specifically, David? Yeah, we got, yeah, we got something over here. Uh, we didn't have much to say earlier about electrical, but uh, we have uh, some of them helping out with uh, setting up our little test bench to. Uh, try out some of the new uh, 2026 firmware, uh, making sure that all works nice. And uh, also our first time writing some uh, thrifty Nova code and seeing how that works. Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks to last year when we had a lot of issues with the firmware and how uh, that kind of hindered our progress with some of the new stuff. So getting off the ground there. Yeah, um, we, we're, uh, we have a separate repository made just to, uh, test the motors in the new firmware um, before we actually go and port all of our Swerve code we wrote before into the new version. Okay. Yeah, that's important. 
All right, so I think we can share. Uh, can we pull up that, put that on the screen? Um, I don't. Is it on the screen right now? Okay, we'll wait for it to come up here. Um, okay, so hopefully we can see this video now of the uh, intake prototype. Um, you see there, it's effectively uh, picking up the the. Uh, cells there, the um, balls, and uh, funneling them into uh, the hopper. So that works really well. Uh, the thing that I think, uh, do we want to hear some comments from the prototype people on how they uh, decided what, what decisions they made and why they decided to go with the wheel placement that they did or some things that they had to overcome? Who wants to talk about that? You guys? Great. Yeah, go ahead, Brenda. So yeah, right now we're working on an over the bumper intake and what we've been dealing with is trying to make like it extended out of the bumper less than 12 inches because right now we had it at 14 because we were using like three inch wheels and we're trying smaller wheels right now, but we just ran it and it doesn't seem to have enough power. So we're trying to see what we can do so it can be still like the 12 inches. And then the inside, the two rollers on the inside seem to be working well. We're just struggling on the one on the outside to make it over the bumper. Okay, yeah, so like design constraints there within the 12 inch extension limit, but then yeah. also being able to pick them up. So is it just that the roller is like, if we put it too close to the robot, the geometry of picking the ball up doesn't work as well or? Because we were trying it with three inch wheels and it was seem to work fine. It just kept coming out from the two rollers. We were thinking of just putting like pulleys there. So it, there's no way it could oh, okay, come yeah. out. But then we were using three inch wheels, so we were, I think we were like 14 inches, so we're using smaller wheels, but those small wheels don't seem to be strong enough to pick up the ball into the intake part. Okay, yeah. So some more prototyping to go with that. Yeah. Um, so that's to come later in the, in the stream. So. Cool, yeah, nice update there. Um, yeah. Is there anything else, anything else? Any other updates, any other? Other status stuff. David, is there anything that you think we need to cover as well? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, that concludes this uh, small, short little update on Saturday night of Michigan Tech's robot in three days. So, uh, yeah, that concludes this segment, I would say.